Good morning and welcome to this worship service at Westminster Presbyterian Church on this beautiful day. It's a joy to have all of you worshiping with us via our live stream service. This is a special day because throughout this pandemic we have been Zooming our worship services and so this is our first live stream uh, worship service. So a special thanks to Brad Slocum who has put all this together and uh, his helpers especially today. So it's our first live stream service, but also it is Scottish Sunday. Westminster is a house of prayer for all people, but on this day, we remember those Scots who came to this country during colonial times and brought Presbyterianism with them. And so there'll be some Scottish music and some Scottish garb. It is also the Reign of Christ Sunday, which means uh, it is the last Sunday in the, the church's liturgical year. And um, that means that next Sunday is the beginning of Advent. Next Sunday's service will also be live streamed and we will begin our Advent themed series, I Believe Even When. And next Sunday will be, I Believe in the Sun, Hope for Tomorrow. We also encourage you in advance of Advent to prepare an Advent wreath for your home. There was a link set out on our recent uh, email blast that will help you um, construct a wreath at home so that as we are lighting candles, our Advent wreaths here in the sanctuary on Sunday, you can light one also on home at home for each Sunday in Advent. On de December 5th, we'll be decorating our sanctuary for Advent and Christmas. So we encourage you to join us at 9 a.m. Contact the office if you are interested. The deacons are facilitating a food drive for River City Food Bank. In our recent email, you could see all kinds of ways that you can help River City Food Bank. They're having an online a giving drive, uh, there's an Amazon related uh, purchases that you could make for River City Food Bank. You could purchase PPE, protective gear for the River City Food Bank and also uh, volunteer if you are able. So some ways that you can give back during the Advent Christmas season. One more way that the Presbyterian Women of Westminster are sponsoring is the Women's Empowerment Annual Holiday Gift Drive. You can find out more about that on our website or, our, or on our emails that go out each week. We encourage you to purchase poinsettias for our sanctuary. They are $15 a plant and just contact uh, the office for purchasing those poinsettias to beautify our sanctuary. And Please get in your December items for the newsletter um, very soon, like tomorrow. After this service at 12.30 p.m., I will be uh, hosting a coffee hour via Zoom. So that um, invitation went out with the email blast on Friday and this morning. So join us for coffee hour, sharing some joys and concerns and visiting with your neighbors uh, today at 12.30 following this service via Zoom. I think those are the announcements for today, so let us begin our worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Let us worship God.
With sincere and repentant hearts, let us name our sins against Christ and one another. Please join me in this unison prayer of confession. Sovereign God, we confess that we are not ready for your holy realm. You guide us toward right paths, but we refuse to follow where you lead. You love and feed and care for us, but we fail to love and serve others. Forgive us, merciful God, so that we may return to your fold and rejoice in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Lamb upon the throne. Amen. Friends, however long we wander, however far we stray, God's steadfast love endures forever. Sisters and brothers, be assured, in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. As our Lord gives peace to us, let us share this peace with each other, saying, the peace of Christ be with you. Let us exchange words and signs of peace, and we encourage you at home, if you uh, are watching this with others, we encourage you to greet one another with the peace of Christ. And if you are alone this day, we greet you in the name of Christ and with the peace of Christ, and I hope that you'll be able to reach out to someone today, give them a call, and uh, share your life with someone today, even though you may be alone in your home. But the peace of Christ be with you. Now we encourage you to gather the children around your computer as I will lead us in a children's message. Good morning, children. It's great to have you joining us on this live stream service today. I'm gonna to read a story to you in just a few minutes, but first I wanna to talk to you a little bit about disguises. Do you have any clever disguises at home? Most children have some kind of disguise that they can wear, sometimes wear them during Halloween or uh, other make-believe games that you play. So I got me a disguise today that I found in my office. It's the only one I could find in the church. But here's my disguise for the day. I think this is left over from our Mardi Gras worship services. So how do you like my disguise? Can you tell it's me? Yeah, you could probably tell it's me, okay. But disguises are fun to wear. It's fun to play games and pretend we're somebody else. Well, I want to read you a little story today. And after the story, I'm going to pray. So I'm not going to talk about the story too much after I read it, but I encourage you to talk it over with your parents and maybe ponder with them what this story means and maybe how God is calling us, what God is calling us to do or to be in this story. Okay, so here goes. Once long ago, but not too long ago, in a faraway place, but not too far away, there lived a very special king and queen. They were, by any standard, very kind, very just, and very wise. Even though their kingdom had no boundaries, for it was large beyond all imagination, everyone in it knew the king and the queen were loving people. Once a week, they would step into their royal coach and would, the coach would carry them through the streets of their kingdom. And of course, all the young men would bow and all the young ladies would curtsy as the king and queen passed by. One day, the queen had twins, a baby girl and a baby boy. The good news spread quickly throughout the kingdom and the people were happy and thankful. Now there would be a princess and a prince who would someday be rulers of the realm. The years passed and the twins grew to be little princess and princes. And once a week, the prince and princess 
and the king and queen would step into the royal carriage and the royal coachman and the royal horses would carry them through the streets. Because the king and queen loved the twins with all their heart, they especially were careful to make sure that no harm would befall them. In fact, they built a very high stone wall around the castle so that the prince and princess would see nothing of the ugly, evil things that happened in the world beyond. But they were curious, just like boys and girls your age. And one day they decided that they wanted to see what the world was like beyond the stone wall. After carefully disguising themselves, they slipped away from the castle. They walked down the dusty roads and through the village streets. They saw the clear blue skies and enjoyed the beautiful flowers and felt the gentle rain just as they did when they lived behind the stone wall. But they also saw people stealing and cheating one another and treating each other poorly, and they saw mothers who were too poor to feed their babies. Of, of course, the queen and king were frantic when they discovered that their dearly beloved children were lost in the great world beyond the castle walls. So the king and queen gathered together all their messengers and told them to go to every street corner and alleyway and read to the people this solemn declaration the prince and princess are lost somewhere among you. Will you help us find them? Young and old, male and female, the people looked high and low for the princess and prince because they knew the king and queen would be forever grateful if they found them. But no one could find the princess and the prince because they had disguised themselves to look just like everybody else. And because the princess and prince could be anyone, the people decided it was best to treat everyone as if they were a prince or a princess. And even to this day, the prince and princess still walk the streets and you may by chance meet them someday, maybe today. Let's pray. Thank you, O oh God, that you love us so much and that you call us to love one another. Help us to treat other people in our lives as royalty, as princes, and princesses because we know that's what you call us to do but also because we know that's what brings us the most joy amen thank you children we hope you have a wonderful week Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Holy God, open your word. Give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation that our eyes may be enlightened and we may know the hope to which, you have been, to which we have been called. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. The first scripture reading will be from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all of the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those on, at his right hand, come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? 
And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me unto the internal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? <clears throat> then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away and turn into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Words of Holy Scripture. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes to us today from Psalm 100. Listen now as the Spirit speaks to the church through these ancient words of wisdom. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God, it is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. 
Give thanks to God. Bless God's holy name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Words of Holy Scripture. Thanks be to God. Well, one of my favorite skits from Saturday Night Live is from 1993, and and it features Chris Farley. And the title of the skit is Hibernol, Sleep Like a Baby. And it is a spoof of a NyQuil commercial. Chris Farley has a cold in the skit. And rather than sleep through the night aided by NyQuil, which is a cold medicine, he takes Hibernol and sleeps through the entire cold and flu season. He wakes up months later with long hair and a beard and nails, but he is rested and feels great. I think I'd like some of that for this pandemic winter we are facing. Can't I just sleep through the next few months until we get a vaccine that is widely distributed? It's been a tough year for everyone. And now we come to Thanksgiving and we have to conjure up some reasons to be thankful. Made even more difficult this year because some folks who are used to celebrating holidays with family and friends will be eating alone. I got a call this past Wednesday from my mother who said she had just talked to my sister, who lives a couple hours away from her in the state of Washington, and told my sister that she would not be coming to my sister's home for Thanksgiving, that she thought it would be better to stay at home during this time of quarantining. And Washington is is also observing an increased uh, rate of infection, and so they're encouraging everyone to stay home. Well, my sister did not take that news very well. But later, as the day went on, she began to understand, and I told my mother, it's perfectly reasonable. People everywhere are staying home, and yes, it's going to make the holiday much more difficult, but it'll be safer. Not only is Thanksgiving this week challenging our imaginations in regard to gratitude and how we can be thankful, but today is Reign of Christ Sunday where we proclaim that Christ is king, ruling over all creation. Well, sometimes that just seems scandalous. If Christ is in charge of this mess, especially this year, I want to be involved in his performance evaluation because I have some real concerns Belief in God requires a leap of faith. But belief that Christ is king and Christ is in charge requires a leap, a few hurdles, and a headfirst dive. How do we get there from here? Well, in New Testament times, folks reconciled this problem with apocalypticism. Yes, evil is running amok now, but Christ is coming soon to vanquish all evil powers, including death itself. Yes, the world is a mess, but Christ will assert his dominance in due course. Just be patient. Of course, we're still waiting. Or maybe we put our faith in a better life after death when As the standard Christian graveside liturgy says, death is past and pain has ended and the deceased has now entered the joy of heaven. Christ is king. We'll discover that fully when this life, this veil of tears, is over. Yet what if these explanations 
are inadequate. What if Christ is king and therefore the world is perfect just the way it is? We're just stubborn in our refusal to acknowledge the world's inherent beauty. Yet historic religions have always proclaimed this. Why don't we see it? From the Taoist author uh, many centuries ago, Cheng Zhu, he writes, the wise one sees the world constantly breaking apart and stays centered in the whole. She sees the world endlessly changing and never wants it to be different from what it is. Or maybe the 14th century Persian poet, Hafez. If your knees have not buckled in ecstasy while standing when a veil parts, if a cherished tear of gratitude has not sung leaping from your eye, if anything your palm does not touch cannot help reveal the beloved, my words are full of golden secrets that are not too hard to crack and will remedy 100 fears and ills. Or from the Christian tradition, Thomas Merton, the contemplative who said, the gate of heaven is everywhere. In the Old Testament book of Job, Job complains to God about all the suffering in the world, and especially his own suffering. He wants an explanation from the one who's in charge of all this, God. And when God finally shows up to answer Job at the end of the book, God seems offended that Job was complaining in the first place. And he goes on to list many of the wonders of creation, both the beautiful and the terrible. How dare you question me when, Job, you just don't understand, can't see. Jesus' Sermon on the Mount makes no sense unless the world, as is, is perfect. But maybe it's the label of perfect that throws us. A better word, a more theologically accurate word, would be holy. Christ is king. All creation is holy. It is sacred, numinous. Perliter prize-winning Christian author Annie Dillard wrote a little article recently and talked about how she has difficulty, difficulty affirming all the ancient Christian creeds and dogmas. And yet, she says, I know only one thing for certain. There is holiness. Standing there, a person can sing myriad songs. Maybe there is a divide between people who honor holiness who bow before it, who pray on their knees, and people who don't. The opposite of holiness is selfishness and egotism and pride. She continues, there is no less holiness at this time, as you are reading this, than there was on the day the Red Sea parted, or that day in the 30th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as Ezekiel was captive by the river Chibin, when the heavens opened and he saw visions of God. There is no whit less enlightenment under the tree at the end of your street than there was under Buddha's bow tree. In any instant, the sacred may wipe you with its finger. In any instant, the bush may flare. Your feet may rise. Friends, if all creation is holy, if your life, even the pain and the sorrow of your life, is holy, then all that's left to do, my friends, is make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth, 
Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks. Bless God's name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. On this week of Thanksgiving, lift up praise to God and give thanks for this beautiful, holy world. Amen. Please join me in prayer for Westminster and the world. Loving God, you have assured us that the days are surely count coming when your people will know peace, your people will know justice, your people will know righteousness. You have assured us that a leader will come to rule with wisdom. We pray this day for those in particular need of justice, righteousness, and mercy. We pray for the trampled, the ignored, the brushed aside, we pray for the homeless, the loveless, and the healthless. We pray for the leaders in governments, homes, communities, and schools, that they may know the influence of wisdom rather than power. You have assured us of the salvation and safety of your people. We pray this day for those who only know violence, those whose countries have been torn apart by invasion, civil war, and private armies. Those communities have been forgotten by all but the warlords and gangs. Those whose homes are places of danger and fear rather than sanctuary and love. May they experience your peace. God of all creation, we pray this day for the reign of Jesus Christ. We pray that in the midst of chaos, we might hear Jesus' words to us. That in the midst of heartache, we might know Jesus' presence. And in the midst of cacophony of voices, we might proclaim that the Lord is our righteousness and let us join together to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed by, by your name, be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, thank you for your continued giving to the church and supporting uh, the church during this time. We have, throughout this year, been able to give gifts to community agencies that especially uh, feed those who are in need, and we know that those agencies are especially impacted right now because uh, people are uh, in economic need and need of food. So through the Christmas Joy offering throughout the year, we've given a monthly donation to River City Food Bank, We've given donations at various times to South County Interfaith uh, Church Partnership, that, that uh, food bank. We've given to the Sacramento County Food Bank, the Us uh, Union Gospel mich uh, Mission, and several other community ag agencies helping those who uh, need food and those who are homeless. So thank you for your continued giving. Please remember, if you have not done so, to submit an estimate of giving to the church for 2021. We've received, thankfully, so many, and uh, there's just a few that are outstanding that we know of, so we encourage you uh, to submit an estimate of giving so that we might put together a budget for next year uh, very soon. So as we go uh, into this 
uh, offertory, we encourage you to prepare your gift to the church or go to a, another window on your com computer and uh, give online from our website. And um, let us uh, share these gifts with one another that God has so graciously given to us. And now in gratitude for the immeasurable gift of Jesus Christ, let us bring our tithes and offerings to God. Let us pray. Holy God, use us and these gifts to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and honor your presence in all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
you for joining us for this worship service today. We hope that your heart was encouraged. We encourage you to reach out to your friends and family and um, tell them about our website and how they could be a part of this service. Uh, you'd be able to watch this service throughout the week. And please join us next Sunday for our Advent, uh, for the beginning of Advent as we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. And have a wonderful um, Thanksgiving filled with gratitude. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord's countenance be lifted up to you and give you peace. Go out into the world in peace, declaring Christ the King and ruler over all creation. Go out into the world with courage, supporting the ways he gives light to those who sit in darkness and guides our feet in the way of peace.